never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another. Asimbonanga. Welcome to another episode of South Africa Today and Beyond. And of course, as you can see, we are coming to you uh, specially on a special location at Freedom Park in Pretoria. And I'm joined by the CEO of Freedom Park, Mejain Mufamad. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I mean, we're so excited to be at Freedom Park. And I think it's fitting that, you know, this interview actually takes place on Freedom Day. Um, it's quite exciting. Thank you so much for having us. But we really want to take a walkabout with you into the park. And you just explain to our viewers, I think, also educate people about the park, the significance of the park why the park was established, I think. And there are a lot of elements that I think we're going to talk about later on, of course, and you're going to explain to us. There are a lot of water features behind us as well. There are a lot of these beams that are going on. I think when people drive into Pretoria, always, you know, as you go up the mountain, you can see the lights that are on at Freedom Park. But, you know, I'm sure there's special and significance around the beams and the lights and so on. So, yeah. Indeed. Uh, I think, as you know, Freedom Park is a national monument. It's a memorial. It's also a museum. You can see there are many names in sure. terms of how we, we describe it. And that is basically deliberate in the sense that it came about after President Mandela in 1999 made a very profound statement when we were celebrating our Freedom Day. He said that the day should not be far off when we shall have a people's shrine a freedom park where we shall honor with all the dignity they deserve those who endured pain so we should experience the joy of freedom so basically in essence that is what freedom park is all about you'll also remember that we had the trc commission in south africa and at the end of that trc there were many recommendations that were made in terms of how we should move forward as a nation and one of those recommendations was a need for symbolic reparation the TRC recommended that we need to establish monuments and memorials to remember those who died for freedom and humanity. They also made a profound statement that we need to educate the nation, South Africa and the world, that our freedom was not free, that people actually died so that we can be free. And this Freedom Park is a fulfillment of that recommendation and obviously bringing back the honour and the dignity for those who suffered pain. Sure. I mean, we'll talk about some of the, the elements, like the Wall of Names, where some of the people that were not South Africans, but for, of other nationalities, that also paid the ultimate sacrifice in solidarity, I think, with the struggle for liberation of this country. We'll talk about that, and I think we'll go also to the war. But just before that, let's talk about the architectural design of this place. And I mean, a lot of the names, you know, Uskumbuto means remembrance as well, you know, and the other elements as well, you know, that I think dip into African culture and tradition as well. Maybe take us through some of the, number one, the architectural design. What, what was the thinking behind that? Uh, everything you see here in terms of the architecture, the aesthetics of the park and the design itself, it's uniquely African. We consulted widely just on the design of Freedom Park. We wanted South Africans to tell us what they would like to see. And many people, particularly the elders, reminded us that the struggle for freedom and humanity was also the struggle for the emancipation of the African voice. So we dug deep into our own indigenous knowledge system. So this architecture is uniquely African. You can see the secular formation, you can see the use of rocks, you spoke about the water, the fire, those are the elements in our African cosmology. And we had to draw from who we are because by celebrating our freedom, we are bringing back the pride 
in terms of our cultures and heritages as Africans. And that is how this uh, park evolved. You'll see, as you indicated, we have many elements and the naming of each element was carefully, carefully decided upon. We are a diverse nation and the naming of the various elements are also in accordance to our diversity. This place where we are is, called, is part of Skumbuto, which is our memorial. We have the Edspans plaque, we have the Gallery of Leaders, we have Mushate, we have Isivivan, and many more. So you can see the diversity in terms of the languages of South Africa. And this is what we are all about, celebrating who we are as Africans. I think that's fantastic. I think let's go through, let's take a walk about it, and then I think we can just show our viewers as well some of the elements we're talking about, some of the names as well we're talking about, and some of the architectural design and how they also fit into the African identity and the different cultures of South Africa, I think it's uh, very rich for. Let's do that. Very exciting. Let's sure. Go. So, I mean, let's talk about some of the elements that we see in this area. There's a water feature there, but also the use of water. What does that represent? Uh, water, it's a universal symbol for cleansing, for healing. If you look also in terms of our various religious communities, they use water mm -hmm. for baptism, for cleansing for many other rituals according to many religious uh, communities. So we thought also water symbolizes life. Wherever there is water, there is life. So as we celebrate the rebirth and the renaissance of, of Africa and South Africa as a country, we thought we needed to use water as that symbol for the new beginnings, for the healing of the spirit, but also of the nation in general. So that is why you see in many of our elements we have used water. You'll see also when we go to Isivivane, also in our Edspan plague, there is a lot of water. You also spoke about the eternal flame, the fire that you see. That is not just a flame or a fire. This is an eternal flame whereby we remember many people who died, but whose names may be lost in history. You'll remember that many people died, ordinary people in the struggle. Some, the names we don't even know, but as a sign of remembrance and respect, we thought we should use the eternal flame to remember them so that they're not lost in our memories because during apartheid in particular and colonialism, a lot of atrocities were not necessarily recorded. And even if they were recorded, it, there were no accurate records. So we use the eternal flame as that symbol of remembrance. And I mean, there's a, there's a sort of a circular shape, if you will. Is that significant as well in terms of some of the, you know, the use of the space and the features around uh, the, you know, the park itself? It is, as I've indicated, that we had to draw a lot from our African perspective and belief systems. And in terms of African perspective, the, the circle is very important. It shows that we are all equal as, as, as communities, as human beings. There are no hierarchies and life has no beginning and end because even after life, you, you, after death, you continue to live. So that's the secular formation symbolizes that, the eternity of life. Okay, let's talk about the, so I see also the circularness of the, the light beams up there. What does that mean? I think firstly the light, the use of, I mean, of course when you drive into Pretoria, you know, it's Freedom Park stands out, no doubt, you know, and it stands out because of the use of the beams and the use of the lights. And they're in a circular formation as well. I think it's quite, it fits into what you're saying right now. But the significance of the light beams up there? Yes, this uh, Quara are actually not light beams. I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a combination of, of, of uh, aesthetics and, and okay. meaning because for every element of Freedom Park, there is a story and symbolism be, be, behind just the design. This, uh, uh, we call them the reeds. You know, again, linking with the water, wherever there is water, particularly as a show of life, there will be reeds. Uh, one of the, the stories of creations in Africa, the Nguni version, they say life began, came from the reeds and human beings emerged from the reeds. So these are actually the reeds that symbolizes the rebirth of South Africa as a nation. As, uh, we, we believe that by attaining our democracy, we were reborn and we are starting afresh as a new nation. So basically this symbolizes the reemergence of life reemergence of people and humanity in South Africa. I mean, it's quite amazing the use of the different elements, you know, fire, water. And also, I mean, when you're up here, you know, there's wind, you know, so the different elements, natural elements that do come in and form part of this. But I think let's walk to the wall of names and let's talk about what the wall of names really mean and significance of the wall of names. Okay, um, as you can see, our wall of names currently has about 85,000 names of the people who died for our freedom and humanity and mainly um, this is across the eight conflicts that shaped what we call South Africa today. Mm. So we started from the pre-colonial wars, which are the wars that we 
as Africans, as South Africans, fought amongst ourselves. Now, CEO, tell us about, I think, the, the wall of names. What does this particular element of the park represent and what is it all about? The wall of names is our main memorial where we memorialize those who died uh, for freedom and humanity. Currently, we have collected and described about 85,000 names across the eight conflicts that shaped what we call South Africa today. You will also remember that uh, we had other wars besides the liberation struggle. So we decided to go back in time mm -hmm. and, and honor everybody who fought for, for any other wars that we fought, like the, the South African War, the World War I and II, uh, the, the genocide of the Khoi and Sen, the slavery, and of course the liberation struggle in its four arms. I think what's significant about this particular area of the Wall of Names is that we see a lot of Spanish uh, surnames, Yo Castro, Garcia, Ramirez, Hernandez. I mean, we know that I mean, the struggle for liberation in this country was also aided by you know, the international solidarity movement. And of course, you know, the Cubans become a significant nation that really contributed, I think also paid the ultimate price. Maybe tell us about this particular section of I think the Cuban names, where, where, what informs this? Yeah, you'll remember that our struggle had also a, an, an international solidarity arm where other people from other countries also assisted us in different forms, Africa and also beyond Africa. Here you see the Cuban names who died in Angola and Kita Kinaval. Uh, the reason why I'm sure people are surprised why South Africans are so passionate about the Cubans, but it's because their contribution to the war, not just in South Africa, but in Southern Africa in general, became the turning point in terms of the, the liberation struggle. And what we loved about what they did was the gesture, because their international solidarity had no strings attached. The only thing they took when they left Africa was the bodies of these people who died in the African soil. So we honor them. You will see that we have about 2,061 Cuban names here. As part of our international solidarity and honoring those, we have already collected names. For example, this year we'll be also inscribing the names of the Swedish who also contributed in different forms. And obviously, the names of the nationals like in Zambia, Tanzania, uh, the SEDEC, uh, Mozambique, I mean, you know, Botswana, the raids were in those raids, not just South Africans died, but nationalities of those countries died. So this is where we honor those people of those nations. Sure, let's go around the corner because I know around the corner it's also now South African names of, yes. of those who participated and also died in the struggle for liberation of this country. I mean, on this particular OC, we see a lot of South African names. Is there a particular, I think one, let's talk about the, the way in which, you know, we've collected, the, the, the park has collected the names, you know, what process has gone through the collection of these names and is there more being collected over a period of time? Uh, we're still collecting uh, more names, but given the enormity of the task, we didn't want to put the names in a particular order. But you will see that we have grouped the names in terms of the different eras and epochs. For example, these names that you see here are for the state-sponsored violence, particularly around the 90s. Uh, these are the people who died during that time. You will see as we go on, there are people, the massacres, the Wipatong massacre and other massacres. You will also see the uprisings like the Sikukune uprising and, and many other people who died either in battle and also because we don't just honor people who died in battle, but as long as people contributed, even if they came back and they died of natural causes, we still remember and honor them for what they did. So for ease of reference, when a visitor comes, you will see that this wall is numbered below so if you and on the other side which I'll show you in the gallery of leaders there, there are screens so you can come and type in a name of your loved one so you will find the biography of the person and then it will also give you the wall number in terms of um, where on the wall because this is a huge wall and it's there are 85,000 names so it may be difficult for one to to quickly identify the name so the number will guide you precisely where the name that you're looking for is and when you see the biography and you read if you pick up that there are gaps in terms of the information you can type in and of course our researchers will validate and verify the names and that is how the process so this is a literally practically public participation process whereby members of the public can participate in history making in memorializing and remembering those who died. And I mean I can imagine a lot of consultation went insofar as I mean speaking with the families of the people whose names are here 
did you manage to reach out to fam some of the families? I mean, as wide as possible. I mean, I, I, this is a monumentous task. But I mean, insofar as reaching out to families, how has that process? How how was shaping that process? That is the most difficult task we had to face. We we are busy. We we did consult to a certain extent, but we we still embarking. We have just launched a, a project that we call honoring of the heroines and the heroes of the liberation struggle where we are making a call to members uh, family members to come forward because you will remember that some of our cadres used combat names so some of what we have here are those names we don't have the original names and therefore we are struggling to reach out to many families as much as we we have also managed to to contact other family members for example on the 28th of this month uh, you will find that we, are, we will be with the MEC for Limpopo Sports Arts and Culture. She's bringing some family members from Limpopo. So we are working with the provinces to assist us with government to locate and honor uh, uh, these people formally and properly. We are hoping that once we have done that, we will invite those members of the families, we'll invite the president to come and formally acknowledge and say thank you to these communities and to these families for the sacrifices that they have made. Sure, I know there's, a, there's also the gallery of, of leaders and heroes on the other side of the park, but I want us to go um, to that particular area. These are the more prominent and more known names, you know, Sisulu's, Julius Nyerere's of this world. I want us to go to that particular area after the ad break and we'll take the conversation forward from there. Okay, let's do that. Welcome back from the ad break and I think this space now we're in the gallery of leaders, like I said before the ad break, see, oh, we see a lot of leaders, you know, from different countries. We have Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, we have Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, of course, Che Guevara, uh, Argentinian born, but I think Cuban by, you know, <laughs> the, the contribution and role that he played, I think, for the Cuban people as well, Somara Machel of Mozambique, but also our own comrades from here in South Africa, you know, Helen Joseph, uh, Steve Biko and the others. What does this space signify? Uh, this is what we call the gallery of leaders and this is where we honor leaders who made outstanding contributions to our understanding of the concept of freedom and humanity and the quest for liberation and freedom and as we indicated earlier you will remember that our struggle was also fought internationally and also there were international leaders who inspired us not to give up uh, so we, we honor national continental and international leaders you will see that we start here with our own very national leaders who contributed to immensely and who inspired a lot of South Africans to not to give up to the quest for freedom and we we have our continental leaders here and obviously our international leaders actually what you see here it's a, what we call the temporary exhibition if you come here in December this year this space will have transformed differently because this is just a sample to date we have about 41 leaders who've been approved for inscription here and honoring. So you'll see that we are busy now working on transforming this space to reflect the diversity of the many leaders. And obviously due to space limitations, we believe that we will not be able to honor everybody, but we're going to use other mechanisms also to reflect and remember those people, even if their names may not be on these uh, exhibitions, but we will have them on our touch screens on our databases so that if researchers, if members of the communities wants to come and learn about this, uh, they will come in and learn that. I think what is also significant is the issue of the understanding of the relationship, how South Africa relates with our continent and of course the international community because sometimes we tend to think that we are isolated and separated and uh, we are not the same but through the efforts of other leaders we were able to attain our freedom and humanity. I mean, if I am to single out uh, countries like Zambia, where we are told uh, the ANC as a liberation movement has a, had a, a government, so to speak. They had departments and all the resources they needed to, to wage the, the liberation struggle. And this is just an example. There are many other countries and therefore when you come here, you'll see that we remember that. And this is a gesture by South Africans to say thank you to the international community for working with us, for supporting us uh, so that we attain our freedom. Absolutely. I mean, the contribution of African countries to the liberation movement and the liberation struggle of this country 
is really is invaluable. I mean, you, you talk about Nigeria, for example, that had a special tax to fund liberation movements of the African continent as well. But also Tanzania gave land for the Somafco Freedom College, you know. Yeah. Uh, so those are some of the significant contributions of the, of the different countries and the different leaders at the time, you know, the willingness and the political willingness, the political will that was there from your Julius Nyereres, your Kwame Nkrumah, Somara Machel. And these countries also sacrificed the prosperity of their own countries through sanctions, you know, that said they won't participate in the economy or aid the economy of South Africa. So I, re I really think this is quite significant. But very quickly in conclusion, CEO, how do we see the use of the space by the public? You know, when they come for different events, how do we see the use of the space? I think the, we are open for, for the public. Actually, this is a space for everybody. We want all South Africans from different backgrounds to come and utilize this space. And I always challenge visitors when they come here that irrespective of who you are, where you come from, come to Freedom Park after a tour, you'll live a new person because you'll have learned something about who you are, where you come from, and who we are collectively in our diversity as South Africans. But you'll also have learned about how we connect with the continent and also the international community. So people can come for events, for normal tours, for picnic. We have beautiful spaces and a lot of lessons to learn about who we are. Absolutely. I think that's all we have for this evening, but join us again next week for the second part of this discussion that seeks to commemorate and celebrate Freedom Day. But also I think it speaks about where we come from, the past, the history of this country as well, but also I think what ought to be the response in terms of nation building and a way forward for this particular country. So join us again next week for a two-part series for the second, second part rather uh, of this day that commemorates Freedom Day. Have a good evening.